was difficult understanding segregation and discrimination and understanding that we had to fight to change the laws and change the attitudes of the country. I served on a segregated army. I realized that the endeavors of the black men and women in World War II all performed a pressure which desegregated the military. It was hard segregation, but we helped to break some of the, some of the rules. Sunday afternoon, I was in the chemistry lab, Clark College in Atlanta, Georgia, when the news came out about Pearl Harbor. I was being protected from the draft by being in college, and I was just waiting to take the exam for the Army Air Corps. I found out the Army Air Corps was available to black men who were college graduates. While I was in, in Howard University as a reservist, until April 43, when I got the notice to go to Tuskegee Army Airfield as a cadet. I was eager to go, dropped all things, all papers. I was a replacement pilot for the 301st Squadron in the 332nd Fighter Group. My job was for strafing trains, trucks, tanks, whatever, buildings. I had 18 missions. Half of the missions were high level where we escorted the bombers from Italy to Germany, flying top cover back and forth across the top and uh, preventing the German fighters from attacking. Our job was to knock out the radar on the coast of southern France, right outside the city of Toulon. We came in 16 planes. The first four guys went in, they shot up the radar station. I went across the target and something came up through the floor, made a hole in the canopy. I got hit, fire came up out of the floor. We were doing about 400 miles an hour. We had approximately 200 feet. So I pulled back on the stick to bail out. In the right hand, I pulled the lever and the whole top of the canopy goes off. You have a big button here with straps holding you, you in. You hit that button and the straps come loose and bingo, I come out. Well, when I came out and saw the tail go by, I looked down, I saw the dog on trees. So I pulled a ripcord real fast and prayed. And when it popped, I'm in the trees. Scratches, no broken bones. I'm trying to get uh, unbuckled from this harness. And I heard a voice, Oxel, yeah. I said, oh hell, okay. There's a German soldier with a gun that looked like it was that big. That's how I, I became a prisoner in southern France in German-occupied territory. From there, I was transferred to Frankfurt on the Main, where I was interrogated by a German officer who pulled out a big book. And on the front of the book, it said, 332nd Fighter Group. He opened the book up and said, Lieutenant, isn't that you? There's a picture of my class, what could I say? I was in, as a POW, treated me humanely, with no beating, no torture, in a room with nine other guys. They were great. The relationship was great, and we survived. When you are under stress and strain of being a POW, racism disappears. It, all the other guys treated me as an equal with uh, no racial attitudes at all. We had 32 men of the 332nd Fighter Group end up as POWs. I was called upon to accept the gold medal in commemoration of the 32 men who were prisoners of war. We are proud that we helped defeat the most vicious society in the world, Germany. We were part of it. I saw Dachau, piles and piles of dead bodies. We could smell the burning bodies a mile away. I'm just proud to have completed 
some of the things they did. It gives you a sense of completion. <laughs>